Hi everyone, welcome back to this series of project management key concepts where we're delving deeper into the concepts of the project management body of knowledge. This one in particular is lead time and lag time. And the reason why we're looking at this is it can often get confused when, uh, when, we're, look when we're actually looking at examples uh, in the PMP exam. So it is really good to get a good idea of it. You will find these questions on the PMP exam. So it's just good to get your head around it first before going into the exam and also then you can use it in your project management career. So lead time and lag time, when we refer to this, apply to your schedule, during your schedule analysis, so looking at the critical path method, finding that critical path, uh, what is the shortest duration that your, uh, that your project can be. Lead time is the amount of time that the next activity can be brought forward. So those two activities can be done in parallel. And we'll look at an example of that. But lag time, when we're referring to lag time in the PMP exam, it's the amount of time that the next activity will be delayed. So it's lagging behind. Lead time, we are leading it forward. Now remember in precedence diagramming a method or the critical path method, we can have different task dependencies. And these are our finish to start, finish to finish, start to start, or start to finish. Where, for example, the second activity cannot finish until the first activity has started. That's how that works. But uh, lead time, you'll find, only applies to our finish to start. So our next activity cannot start until our previous activity has finished. But lag time can affect all of these. So any of these activities can lag behind or have a lag in between uh, those two activities. So let's look at an example of lead. Let's see a photo shoot, for example, will take four days and that photo editing will take six days after that. Now, instead of waiting until the end of the four day photo shoot to begin editing those pictures, we could start editing after the first day of shooting. So in, uh, then instead of 10 days in total, because we've got four days here and six days here, we're bringing this photo editing forward, we're leading it forward and using that lead time that's available. Uh, and now our total time sits at seven days instead of the 10 days because we've led it forward, we're leading it forward and, uh, and we've taken advantage of that. As you can see, the, the two items are now done in parallel. They're done at the same time for a portion of those activities as well. Now lag is, the, is moving it the other way. So let's say for a house, a house frame might take five days to put up, but it also has to wait five days after the concrete foundation has been laid. So we don't want to put anything on that concrete foundation in, in case it you know, uh, messes with the integrity of that concrete foundation, for example. And we just want to make sure that it sets properly. So we have to have a lag in our project schedule. That's the five day lag for our concrete to set. Our second activity here is lagging behind the first activity and that lag in this case is five days long. Now that is the idea of leads and lags in your project schedule.